a lot of cultural changes through time may have been forced by catastrophe. That it's not just one slow, steady progression that results in, mm -hmm. you know, the naked ape with the black mirror. But actually, we get knocked around. But the reason, actually, the reason we are the naked ape with the black mirror is because of the Younger Dryas event. And that's the importance of it. Because that is well established to be the beginning of modern man and civilization. All right, 13,000 years ago, right after the Younger Dryas, well established that that's when you started um, gathering into villages, uh, domesticating animals, and growing crops mm. right after that. And I asked the discoverer of the earliest agriculture who spoke at the Cosmic Summit 2023 coming up June 15th through 17th in just a month, the next edition. But last year, um, Dr. Andrew Moore, who's in his 70s and has been digging a site uh, or dug a site, Abu Herrera, in the early 70s, where he discovered the earliest agriculture. And he later became, was the most recent outgoing president of the American Archaeological Institute. He's a top archaeologist. He believes there was a catastrophe 13,000 years ago because at his site where he discovered the earliest agriculture, he found evidence for impact with us. And he had been studying that site since 1972. And when he saw the data, he said, these people are onto something. And he has now joined our team, publishes, lead on the papers. And that's the kind of scientist you need. Mm. That's exactly the kind of guy. And, you know, it takes some courage, but it doesn't take a lot to come back and say, oh, those things that I thought were campfires, that was actually charcoal mm. from the destruction. Right. So he admits his own previous what he thinks were flawed interpretations based on new data. He looked at it again and said, holy shit, not only did I find evidence for agriculture, I found evidence for um, for catastrophe. So I said, Dr. Moore, how soon after the catastrophe did we start growing crops, which would have been the very first agriculture on Earth? OK, so we got shocked. We were we went from plucking pears to pulling plows. Right. Kind of like the Bible says, you know, you went from kind of hanging out in a hunter gatherer world. Mm -hmm. Right. Where you didn't grow crops and didn't have sheep and all that. And you just kind of lived off the land. And then all of a sudden we kind of it, it seems the impact shocked us into a different way of life. And we started growing crops. So I said, Dr. Moore, how, how soon after the catastrophe do we start growing the crops at Abu Ray? He said, oh, immediately, son. How quick was immediately? Like he meant immediately, like you can't distinguish any time period between them. And and they find their melted glass on bone. You find that elsewhere, too. But, um, yeah, th there was a bad day at Abu Herrera, the first site of agriculture, and it did something to us. So it, it, it turned us, and it turned us ultimately into the technological people we are today and the you know, society, civilized people, for better or worse. This was probably pretty nice before then. So the, the Younger Dryas yeah. lasted, we think, 1,200 years total, right? That's right. Now, during that 1,200-year span, were we constantly getting bombarded by, by cosmic impacts? Or was, it, or was there only one in the beginning and the end? We don't know. Okay. I suspect and others suspect that it was a period of increased activity. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> and in fact, that we may have had increased activity and impact, say that that, that chunky part of the torrid meteor stream, right. we're still hitting it twice a year. Maybe we had a series of bad interactions over a couple of hundred years, right? And then so. And, and they could have lasted, maybe they tailed off over a thousand. We, we don't know, but we do know that the end of the Younger Dryas was every bit as dramatic as the beginning. In fact, almost more so, that we pop out of a long period of climate wildness. Then we have the younger drought. You have a long period of climate wildness. I can show you some graphs. And then... And then all of a sudden, the, yep. the climate warms up. And then it warms up overnight. It's like somebody's going to make a movie out of this one day. It's such a great... It's a three-part story. You've got the people before... Then they struggle in the middle, and then the sun rises in a day, and God makes it all right again, or whomever, mm -hmm. right? And then the strangest thing to me, and uh, that then the climate stabilizes till now. Right. It is unbelievably quiescent 
in the last 13,000 years relative to the previous three or 400,000. Right. So it's spiky as shit and wild. Right? Yeah, can you show a graph that shows the, the climate for the last, yeah. whatever it is, 100,000 years or something uh, like that? certainly can, sir. Oh, no, no. And I'm like, do we know why as soon as the Younger Dryas ended, it, the temperature shot back up? Because no. so, so during the whole Younger Dryas period, yeah. it was cold, right? That's right. Cold as shit. Oh. Uh. Mm -mm. There you go. Okay. Younger dries. It plunges down. Okay. Here's the big picture. And so at the end, is, it gets even colder. Right. And this is going back, Danny, what's it say there? 400,000 years. Okay. And it starts as kind of counterintuitive. The old stuff is on the right, and then it's getting younger as you go to the left. Okay. So I actually should just run the slide or it's going to look confusing. Okay. Here we okay. go. That's 400,000 hey. years. Yep. And then it goes up and down and up and down and up and down. And, and then you have the the YD there at the end. What is that YD? See the That's dot, the dot okay, got it. Line. Yeah. Yeah. And, but here's the thing. And you asked a good question over dinner last night. And I said, well, I think I can answer this tomorrow. You need, need some visuals. But I think you were heading towards, well, boy, that looks really wild back there. It, what's different about the Younger Dryas? Right. Mm -hmm. What what distinguishes it from those other wild ones? Well, first of all, it was a pretty good dip. So it was a good dip in in a, of its own in comparison to its others that preceded it. But none of those animals went extinct. Those same animals lived through that four hundred thousand years, mm. and then in that final dip, you lose two hundred species, fifty five genera of animals. That red line, that's the beginning of the Younger Dryas or the end of the Younger Dryas? Um, damn near both. Oh, it, so it's just like the whole period. Yeah. Let me see. What's the next slide here? The start, at the start of East... Uh, Massive explosions, intense firestorms, habitat destruction, toxic chemicals, sudden climate change. What about humans? And this is, inter this is interesting. Mm-hmm. So I'm a North Carolinian, but I love the southern state, South Carolina. And you can see that is records of Clovis points, these wonderful okay. spear points that came from these people. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's every, every Clovis point that's been recorded in South Carolina. Okay. And then after the Younger Dryas, you never see another Clovis point. You never so their Clovis people are gone. And, but you still still see spear points, but it changes to what archaeologists would say, a, a different technology. How and is it different? It, that it's just a different kind of arrowhead that you don't see. They don't make them like this no more. Mm -hmm. They make them, they call them redstones. But see how few of those there are? So it seems like there was a population collapse. That there are a lot of Clovis points and many fewer redstones. So is that a proxy for population? I don't know. Maybe they didn't need airheads as much and wanted to change their technology. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But it but it suggests that um that uh that humans had a very bad day too. Right. And then there are all sorts of other weird stuff, man. I tell you one that a lot of people don't know about. And you know, there's so many people becoming educated on this stuff, which is mm -hmm. wonderful. I remember when everybody that knew about this could fit in a car. And in fact, sometimes we did. <laughs> And now, because of Rogan and yourself and all the wonderful communicators, just watched it blossom. You know, but where, where am I heading? I'm getting romantic there with the, watching all this over the last 17 years. Um, oh, gosh, I lost my train of thought. But, but the human population collapse is a, is a very, here's another one, points for uh, Clovis to Redstone. So those are Clovis on the right. So you've got eight to one Clovis in Virginia to Redstone, five to one. So it just seems like there were many fewer people. It looks pretty similar, though. Yeah. One looks smoother. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Um, a paper came out. So everybody, a lot of people are getting educated on this. So I want to throw in some new stuff. One is that a paper came out a couple of years ago. It must have had 30, 40 authors on it. It's a genetics paper. And it said that they had determined that 13,000 years ago, the composition of males to females changed. So what's the composition today? You know, it's like 52, 48. I think there are a few, few more gals than guys. 
All right, but it's you always think it's fifty fifty. After the during the younger Dryas during that period, it went to I believe the number is seventeen women for every man. Right. How the hell did that happen? What kind of weird world? And why did it change things that way? If we're right about our thing, and if we're not right about our thing, what the hell happened? Why would... And would it be from maybe hunting or, stress, or, or fighting? Yeah, there's some indication that stress and cold may change the composition of boys to girls. But they also says uh, the, the paper's interesting. It what does it do? Combat. The, the you know this is just the genes that there were literally whatever seventeen times more men than women or women than men. So um, so yeah, there's just a, a lot still to be learned. It's still coming out, and those people were not interested in pr- proving the younger Dryas impact, but it helps provide an explanation for the data that they're getting so is it is the idea that the, the more women survived than men no that something would have changed the the balance of births from women to men um let me see if i can find that paper so this it's been a while since i've done this but i think is a proxy for the what happened okay the, the transition to human reproductive bottleneck related to the younger driest cooling event. That's right. Okay. Right. And that's in their paper. So what they're saying is that it started, so you can see there's a little bit at one. So that the, our very bad day was right there, was right there. And then for, then it starts going down. Mm-hmm. So there are more women to men. I believe so that's so before the younger driest, this was a, an ice age. Mm, we were coming out of an ice age. In fact, right before the Younger Dryas, I've heard it said that it was pretty much like it is now. All right? And then we But slipped, way more ice. But way more ice. Exactly. That okay. There was a lot of ice still left over. And believe it or not, it takes a long time for that stuff to melt. Mm-hmm. So it could be just as warm. Well, we've got Greenland today. You've got places that aren't especially cold, but are still got a couple of miles of ice on them, right? Right. I mean, they're cold. But... Um, but 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 yeah, so it was pretty much like today, and then temperatures drop, you know, fifteen to twenty degrees uh, in the northern hemisphere almost overnight, and then that changed the male to female composition, and then it plummets. Not long after. Now this is not the Comet Research Group's data or interpretation. This is just you know me, pajama scientist and whatnot. Okay. But a lot of people notice that. But one of the they could have attributed it or at least included our hypothesis as a perhaps a cause, but but we're kind of radioactive. The younger dry impact hypothesis is for both in, you know, in, in many laboratories because it's so radical. So they don't bring us up. But what do they attribute it to? And this blew my mind. Innovations in transportation technology, e.g. the invention of the wheel, horse, and camel domestication and open water sailing. Now those are interesting developments in humans. The thing is they all happened six, seven thousand years after this. So basically, they're supporting Graham Hancock. <laughs> they're saying that that thirteen thousand years ago, or immediately thereafter, that we were open water sailing. Well, hell, that's a, that's more radical than saying there was an impact. So I don't know how, particularly given all of the authors on this thing, they're saying when when oh, I'm sorry, well, I'm confused. When yeah. did they say the open water sailing and the wheel started? Then. When? Uh, 13,000 years ago. Whenever the drop came. They're attributing this, so at least more than... It happened at the beginning or the end? Yeah, this would have been kind of right at the end. That's when it starts. So I don't know how long that is. That's to 10,000 years ago. So then it drops dramatically after that. So what they're saying is that dramatic drop 10,000 years ago. Okay. Would have been due to open water sailing, the invention of the wheel. And oh, the, I'm sorry. I'm thinking that graph was cl- that was climate. That graph is population. Yeah. Okay. Or, okay. or their main point, what the balance of girls so, and boys was. Go, go back I up. Believe. I want to look at that graph. God, I'm feeling more. weak on this, and I wish I'd read it before we came in. It's been a Scroll couple a little bit down. So yes, go, back, go back to that, that colored graph we were just looking at. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Southeast and East Asia is the blue, and this is population, or this is region. Okay. Yeah. Now, 
human reproductive bottleneck related to the younger dryas. So this is just overall. Um, I guess it's, it's decline in population and also and the change. Yeah, because you're not going to have as many people if you go through many generations of 17 women to one man. Mm -hmm. It's right? interesting that the, the Africans didn't drop until way after. Everybody else uniformly dropped together. Yeah, yeah. Well, excellent, Steve. Yeah. Africa didn't really get hit too bad, right? Because a That's lot of right. the bigger animals survived in Africa. Exactly. Uh -huh. And think of this. What of an insult it is to those hunters that there's still elephants around. If the Clovis people could come in and in 250 years take out every mammoth, not to mention an armadillo the size of a golf cart, who mm. the hell eats the last bears, one? Bears, saber-toothed tigers. Exactly, the short-faced cave bear. Who goes in while there is still a squirrel anywhere that you could go and kill and eat? Mm -hmm. Why would you go eat the last short-faced bear? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, or the last glyptodon. I mean, people don't eat armadillos today. The hungriest man in South America doesn't eat armadillos. Mm. Right? But we ate every single last one of them. That's absolutely you know, preposterous. Right. Um, so big changes during this period. And you see that throughout science. You can see paper after paper after paper describing incredible things that happened 13,000 years ago. The problem is they just don't have what are to some an incredible answer. Mm -hmm. There's an equally astonishing answer. 